We call through the echoes of time. So we talked about, sorry, Kundewi then with the... Little Valley of yeah. One with God. David is David. David is not Dewi. D-E-W-I, Dewi, is one with God. There's only one person, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, yes. And that's his little valley. And there's Bryn Hentland, the, uh, the hill above it, the, the certain hill, a type of hill, of the old church. Yep. And all the other names. <laughs> and the, the village then off the main road is Dinas Cross, City of the Cross. And the other names like the Netherwich also match up with these other. One, one end of the village is called Jericho. Yeah, there's a strange thing, isn't there? There's a lot of Welsh names in there. I mean, that biblical Jericho. names. Well, there's Bethlehem as well, isn't there? Yes. Uh, yeah. How could it be a Bethlehem in Wales as well, then? That's, uh, well, they have uh, I think that's related, or it's just in honour of sort of thing, is it? Or, I, I don't know. Anyway, the, the story... Was he, born in, was he born in Judea? Well, that's the question, isn't it? That's what I was leading to, I suppose. We don't... Yeah, was he born in Judea? He might have been born in Britain, you mean, though? It's possible. That's where the ten tribes were. And there is a Bethlehem there, of course. Because mm -hmm. this yeah. thing about Nazarenes is a confusing title as well, isn't it? Because it's yeah. more of... Um, yeah. It was adding on much later, wasn't it? A Nazareth. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's nothing to do yeah. with that. There's no such place as Nazareth, um, it wasn't, was there? That was not a, at that time. Yeah. It's more of a cult, wasn't it, this Nazarene? Right. It was a... Yeah. I don't mean that in an unpleasant way. It was a, well, it was a, it was a, we've not gone into it in any... Well, that's an interesting story yeah, in itself, it, isn't it? You know, we, but we do know where he's buried. Yes. But you're saying that the, the relieving, revealing of that information, though, is... Uh, would do the church good, perhaps, you think? Maybe? It would do the church a power of good, wouldn't it? I mean, do people really think he floated up to heaven from a street corner in Jerusalem? That happened in 702. The story uh, was created. Uh, created. Yeah, a, yeah. a Catholic monk. There were people who had been digging all around Jerusalem. Where's he buried? Where he's buried? They were all for hundreds of years. And this Catholic monk solved the problem by saying... Here, on this street corner, he stood and he ascended to heaven. And that's how you get the ascension, an ascension day, and all that crap. And he shot up to heaven. Well, they thought the earth was the universe, and the stars were little little tennis balls, and the sun was a beach ball, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. moon was a football, and everything. <laughs> well, 700 years after the cru crucifixion. That's when, it was... that's when this idea came into being. If you re do a bit of research, that's when it started, the ascension. That solved the problem. Mm. You don't have to look for him anymore. He shot up to heaven. He, we ascended. You know, they have the ascension day, you know. Because you don't go with him dying on the cross at all, is it? Is the, well, the evidence wouldn't seem the to evidence say that. The evidence is that he didn't. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, it took three or four days normally for a fit man to die on the cross. That was the cool thing about it. But he died <coughs> in a couple of hours. And uh, I've got a book here. Somebody's analysed hyssop. Yes. And a man dipped the sponge in hyssop and gave him a drink of hyssop. It consists of three items and it's a <laughs> not get enough out of an elephant. If you want to operate on somebody, you give him hyssop, bonk, he'd be gone. <laughs> so they knocked him out, didn't they? So he's down, <laughs> they think he's dead. They take Jab him, him with a spear, yeah. Uh, they take him off the court. You jab anybody with a spear who's unconscious. <laughs> with That's an operation works. It's yeah. an operation. Well, the thing I spot as well is uh, my going to chapel and everything is if you look it's very clear in the Bible. It says the Romans then broke the legs of the first guy, broke the legs of the second guy. And not the they didn't, didn't break, because their deal was you suffocate, wasn't it? You break the legs, that would, uh, so that would finish you yeah, off, wouldn't yeah, it? Because yeah. the, the, the whole idea was you suffocate with crucifixion, wasn't it? You Cash. think they slow him down? Cash. And it does say in the Bible, doesn't he? When he sees the, the, the disciples, he says, I'm not a ghost. He said, look. Uh, that's me. Look at the hands in my ha holds in my hands. I got the holes in yeah, yeah, and I'm hungry. <laughs> he eats broiled fish or whatever, yeah. I mean. Yeah, he's dead. he then came to Britain. <coughs> the Holy Family arrived in West, Western Britain, and therefore he's buried in Britain, you see. Along with the rest of the family as well, because where's the other graves? Where's Mary's grave? Oh, she's, where's... In, she's in Worms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can trace them if you take the time and trouble and, and understand it. And we traced his mother, you mean, and not his wife. Well, it's three Marys, isn't it? <laughs> three, <laughs> one of them is his wife, obviously. Well, yes. Well, that's another controversial thing, if he was married, wasn't it? And if he had... Uh, well, people don't even seem to like to accept that he had brothers and sisters, even though James is quite clearly mentioned in the Bible as a brother. There's four of them brothers. He's got four brothers, at least, in various texts. But, yeah, why shouldn't he have children? Yeah, or, or brothers, sisters, children, mm -hmm. wife. And then you've got the strange person that uh, arises in Wales, the lame fisher king, who's lame, 
and he walks with difficulty. Well, he'd be walking with difficulty. He had bloody big nails. <laughs> I'm a three, you'd need, you'd he lived be, just for six hours. He was yeah, still hurt. Yeah, I'm a three yeah. feet. You'd be laying in Britain. You. So he's clearly in, in Britain. And uh, it's not impossible that he had to run. Yeah. How do you think Joseph of Arimathea seemed to marry Mary at some point, maybe after the I crucifixion know, or something? Possibly. Like that? possibly. Oh, okay, well, that's another story. I don't know. But, but anyway, it, it, this thing takes you everywhere. It does, point. it does, doesn't it? Because one of the points that you've made is that if if you were in this situation of fleeing the Romans in roughly 33 AD, or 36, or, or, right or, round about there anyway, yeah. where, where would you go? Where's the Roman Empire end, isn't it? Well, you go to ancient kinsmen. Yes, the kinsmen. And the yes. 12 tribes are the Welsh. And the Roman Empire definitely wasn't there, whichever yeah. version it you go with. It wasn't there at all. And that's how the Romans then were determined to burst into Wales if they could. <laughs> oh, you think that's part of the reason for the oh, invasion? Yeah, though? yeah, yeah. Well, they invaded Britain. And for one reason or the other, there was uh, an argument over the throne in the English areas, which weakened them instead of being strong. They were weakened. The Romans had a foothold, and the Romans had a foothold. Organisation again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. organisation. But they, they certainly then, when they got into Wales, they took King Caradoc of his queen and the whole family to Rome. Mm. Around about were, 51, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 52, I think. But they were tumultuous welcome. Now, normally they took a captured king to Rome, they killed him. Mm. Mm. It was tumultuous. The whole, the whole of Rome turned out. And he was fated and this thing. Stayed there six or seven years and then came back uh, because he was the ancient kinsman of the Romans, you see. And uh, then his sister married the general in command of all the Roman armies, and his daughter married the second in command. So he, he had some pretty <laughs> powerful family members, you know. Yeah, they weren't and peasants, were they? They weren't peasants, you see. And he was allowed to enter the Senate and speak. No, that's unheard of. I mean, the whole thing is wrong. They recognised that they were, the Romans are 12 tribes, right? And the Brits are 12 tribes. <laughs> they, they kinsmen. Mm, mm, mm. Simple. Well, so then you go on to the first. The Brits of Western Britain were ones. So then you go on to the first bishops of Rome and stuff, then, isn't it? With it, uh, yeah. is it Thinus or Thinus or Linus? Linus, Linus, Linus the say. son of King Caradoc, is the first bishop of Rome, not Peter. Right, right, right. Because what are the other things? And Caradoc, yeah. they had a short trial to get the point over. Caradoc's sister was put on trial of his daughter, anyway, for being a Christian. Mm -hmm. The um, heretic, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, and she was acquitted. They uh, allowed Christianity. Th that's how Christianity got into Rome. Created a precedent, didn't they? Yeah. Because he was the husband, I think, was the magistrate, wasn't he? I think it was the <laughs> yes. magistrate. It was clearly no, a show no, trial, no, wasn't it, to make a, a point? Trial, but they made to a make point. a point, yes. And yes. They, 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 they were ancient kinsmen. And they always said they were kinsmen of the Romans. So, once you start... Now, the English don't like these histories. Yes, yes. Which is quite sad in a way, because most English are not Angles and Saxons, as no, they believe. This is no. their history as well, isn't it? This it's is British history. history. Yes. It's all our history. I mean, my father was born up in the north of England. He was taken to Wales when he was four, three or four years old. My mother's side, they're all Welsh. Mm. And so I am born in Wales, so I consider myself Welsh in that sense. But I, I've got an affinity with the English people. I've never had the slightest trouble. No, no. Yeah, you, you know, Welsh person and no English person has the slightest trouble. Why should they? Hmm. You know? What I was saying was, even if um, most of England is the old British anyway, isn't it? Or yeah. variations thereof. Yeah. A lot it's, more it's, than they think. Yes, a lot more than uh, they think. The, yes. You know, uh, the, a comet destroyed Britain, 562. And after the comet had smashed up Britain, it went south, southwest. Well, if you go to North America, South America, mm -hmm. in northern area, is all big temples in the forest. Down Bolivia, were you? Uh, yeah. No, no, in all through, anyway. Oh, right. We've okay. got temples all over the great forests of North America, uh, South America, the northern areas, mm -hmm. and no people, because the people would have lived probably in lesser houses, of huts of wood, there are plenty of timber there. Oh, yes, yes, I'm with you now, yes. And yeah. a comet would have wiped them all out. Because the theory is that they deserted their leaders because of. Whatever they anyway, wiped the comet coming from northeast, going southwest. That's its path. It smashed the place to pieces. Killed everyone. 
It depopulated Britain. Mm-hmm. That's how the Saxons got into Britain and the Angles. Most of the population was killed by bloody comet. It's in the records, but you mustn't read the records, whatever you do. Because that the Anglo-Saxon conquest, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. The Bay Bull Council, they were coming into a depopulated... Read the records, it says that they were scattered groups of bewildered people. Like, <laughs> the place was smashed up, like Hiroshima or Nagasaki after the atom bomb was dropped. Only a scattered of atom bombs. Britain was whacked. Mm-hmm. And it went and it was straight across the Atlantic, hit South America, and destroyed all those civilizations. And then you got these huge temples on the hills and that beautifully made and uh, you know. Yes, and, des- and curiously deserted, yes. And all deserted. There's a theory they just move on after a bad drought or something, isn't it? Is the theory, isn't it? Yeah. Once upon a time. Well, that's the official one, isn't it? You know. Well exactly he's guessing, isn't it? There's no evidence for read that. History. Hmm. And the the thing is, you see, the church is the play. No stone can ever fall on the earth from heaven, Catholic Church. So if you said a comet came over and all sorts of debris fell from it, and it went, oh, you can't say that. No stone can ever fall from heaven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, of course, they thought heaven was some big city just above the clouds up there, which it isn't. And the earth is not the creation and uh, as I said, the sun's a beach ball and the moon is a football and the stars are golf balls. It's the other way around. We're, we're the atom, not a little snooker ball, and the sun is, mm-hmm. yeah, it's much more than bigger than a beach ball. <laughs> it's a balloon. And so it, the thinking it, it was in that way. And so no stone could fall to heaven. Why could it? There's nothing up there to fall to. Right, right. Sort of a, a big lid with stars stuck on it. Yes, yes. The, f- the firmament, isn't it called? The firmament. That's it, yeah. Yeah. And if you sail too far, you go over the edge, bang. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, we don't story behind that one, don't we? Because they. Uh, yeah, but we're stuck. Yes. We're, we're stuck with that thinking. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it's deliberate sometimes, isn't it? Like the, the edge of the world was deliberate to stop oh, people oh, going to America, wasn't it? Because they didn't fit in with the. Yeah, you've with talked it. about that as well, haven't you? Yes, you've written yeah, about yeah, the. They didn't want to go in. Yeah. So they made I was uh, 30,000 miles away and you drop off the edge. And That's right, yeah. God knows what happened there. Because this partly proves there's loads of old records of there being Americas and different yes. peoples. And again, yes. the church yes. is so we can't have that. It doesn't fit. Well, how could they possibly have it? I mean, have civilizations out there yes. which had nothing to do with God. <laughs> there must be descendants of Magog or Noah or yeah, something whatever, or whatever. You know, or whatever. Yeah. Come up with something. And just make it fit somehow, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This guy's, uh, you know, this guy's six foot four. We've only got a suit for the five foot two. A man will cut his feet off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cut his feet off. He'll fit the suit. Then. Get him in, yes. Get him in. And I think this is what's gone on for far too long. I'm not anti-church. I think they've got a great deal to offer. And I, I think, uh, you know, like people work as Buddhists and some as Mohammedans. But basically, they're all saying the same thing. They all say there's a God and we ought to respect him. You know, and he's the creator. Well, I well they've all got a message of love, haven't they? This is the other exactly. Hmm. It's hmm. not what they got different, it's what they got the same. Yes, yes. And I, I, I think... I think you were saying off camera, this, the church needs the, this boost of... If you could say where Jesus is buried or something, you know, it's... A, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially in, in Wales, they call oh, it... Oh, he's in Wales. Because we always call it the language of heaven and God's country and all that yeah, kind of well, stuff. Yeah, well, if they're the 12 tribes... I don't, you see... You've got the ten tribes migrate, and they vanish, and with them as remnants of the other two tribes, right? They vanish. They sail past Gibraltar, and they're gone. Where'd they go? Hmm. Hmm. They can either go across the Atlantic to... Well, I well some people try so. to argue that, aren't they? Or they go up to Britain, which is highly likely. Yes. And don't tell me they wouldn't have known about Britain. They, they, people would have known Britain. Well, they've been tin trading for tin trading forever, forever haven't they? Yeah, yeah. So they went to the UK, right? Now that makes sense, but of course they're not English. Oh, they're not German, they're not Saxons, oh my God. You know? And that, that's the sort of thinking that you've got to adopt, is what is logical and what is mm-hmm. idiotic. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, it's high time that we all got together and said, look, let's sort this out. It's common sense, isn't it? And the records are not wrong. Why would ancient people write records which are plain inventions, totally wrong, Highly imaginative. They didn't. Well, totally, they didn't. totally imaginate and, until uh, 
hundreds and hundreds of years later, Schliemann digs one lot up and uh, Woolley digs another lot up and they fit the stuff they made up a ah, thousand years the, ago. But, they fit, you know I mean? <laughs> but the imagination stuff. Well, it's amazing imagination if they know what Woolley's ah. going to dig up 2,000 years in the future ah. Ah. and what Schliemann's going to find 2,000 ah. years in the future. Ah. 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 That's a good guess, wasn't it? That's remarkable. This part of the world you never heard of, we're going to find something, and it's going yeah. to say this, and it's going to be in our writing. Yeah, I think that it's time. Well, even things like finding the words for Cobra and Old Welsh, you know, to me, they're yeah. significant, you know, with yeah. Kebra and stuff. I mean, why uh, is that there? Yeah, Kebra. Why, why, why is that in the Old how Welsh? Would, how would the Welsh have a word for a Cobra? Yeah, going back hundreds and hundreds of years. It just, it doesn't <laughs> mean, and also, almost, a, yeah, yeah, and a very similar word, you know, as well, when, you know, with Kebra, and then that kind of yeah. ties in with the hieroglyphs and everything, doesn't yeah. it? It all ties together. And the fact you can read the Egyptian hieroglyphs mm -hmm. using Welsh, but well, we're the only ones that's ever tried it. I know. Well, that's a piece of cake. Yeah. You can teach a ten-year-old to do it. You don't have to be a professor in some university labouring away. I'm glad you keep saying this because I'm, I'm trying to get people to try it, and they, they look at me askance. You know, they're. Uh, well, we read our book. I followed and your notes. Shows you I, how, I, there's I've a little it. trick to it. In yeah. You've got to read it. Yes. But, uh, it, it's perfect. It happens. It, it, it works every time. If it worked once or twice, it's a fluke. But it, hmm. it works every time. Yes, and, and and the double meaning as well. That that, oh, that ties in. Well, well, well. That that's kind yeah. of key key yeah. proof, isn't it? There's a yeah. We got the proof this way and that way and the double. Well, all we're doing is saying <clears> the British histories that have been abandoned. <laughs> in correct. in yes. favour of Anglo-Saxonism and Normanism, the ancient British histories are correct. Mm. Why would our ancestors write histories that were bunkum? Mm. Why would we do it? There's no point in it. And the more we find, the more they're uh, proven, if you like. Yeah. I want to find a massive dick and said, oh, look at this, yeah. this disproves British history. It's the opposite, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. It keeps adding well, more evidence. We've, we found that we were, <clears throat> when we started doing this, we were really getting academics very upset mm -hmm. now that means one thing to me it means that they're wrong and they know it and they don't want this coming out they don't want the argument well something i do on youtube they don't want the debate yes. something i do on, on on almost every single subject in the world you go to youtube where the videos are and type in whatever it is debunked right it could be theory of gravity debunked uh, the world's round debunked anything I every few weeks or every couple of months I put in Alan Wilson or Wilson and Blackett debunked nothing no one can come up with a way of disproving nothing. what you've done yeah. no one's even tried this is the part I think it's why you made it so difficult for academics but we haven't left grey areas for them invited them but you haven't left any grey areas for them it, it makes no, perfect there are sense plenty to do okay well, tell some of the grey areas we need to look into them because there's, I, there's plenty to do because it's a slam dunk what you've given is so comprehensive yeah, it's hard to uh, it's, find the holes in it there's an awful lot of exploration to be done there's an awful lot of interpretation of, of sites and, and so on and there's an awful lot to be done in re-educating people oh that's a big job yes and they can write their books they can give lectures they can teach people how to do it and it, it, they, they can start rewriting their histories because mm -hmm. this alters other histories mm -hmm. and therefore they have to readjust and there's masses of histories to be readjusted. Mm -hmm. There's loads of work for I suppose so, yes. Yeah. It works for Microsoft, doesn't it? They re redo it all every few years. You have to... Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I, the idea that there's nothing in it for them, there's plenty in it. Right, OK. I, in my opinion. Yeah. And we, we've only scratched the surface of what's in, in Britain. What sort of areas would you like to look at you know, or people to look at if you're thinking there? Uh... Here's something we've never... Don't give away your next project, but, you know, something you think... Oh, yeah. Any ideas to inspire people? Well, the first thing to do is to get British and Irish history correct. That's the first thing. Uh, the knock-on effect, then, is to uh, examine, certainly, South America. And I said Peru, because mm, the alphabet mm, said. Mm, mm, uh, and also and the to and everything, yeah, yeah. examine the idea of the comet coming from the north, east, going southwest, smashes up Britain, smashes up South America. Big temples standing on hills, you know, through the forests, no people there. You know, there's an awful lot for them to do, just try and piece things together. There may be inscriptions in those temples that we could try and read. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of inscriptions to be read in, in I think, in Peru, and there's plenty of inscriptions and other reading to be done, and analysing what comes out of them. Mm. There's a lot of mm. nitty gritty work to be done, right? You know, it's not. It's not. We've had a slam dunk in a way, yes, 
But we've only scratched the surface, really, haven't we? Mm-hmm. So there's, there's an awful lot. Well, I know one of the fun things I've been doing, I've talked to you about, is some of the interpretations of hieroglyphs. We can read the Egyptian hieroglyphs. Yeah. No, isn't that worth doing? Yes, and I say the fun we have in as well, though, some of them I've read yeah. slightly different to how you've read them. You know, yeah. this is the fun, isn't it? This, the, the principles are correct. Getting it right, is the yes, right. yes, the, the, it, uh, it yeah. works, but there's still room for interpretation and, and, and stuff, isn't there? There's yeah. alphabet <coughs> inscriptions in Europe, in Colman. Sorry? In Turkey, there's, there's oh, right, yes, alphabet yes, yes, there. Yeah. That has to be done. And the, the same thing in Macedonia and other places. This, this damned alphabet is all of southern Because you, you've looked at cuneiform, haven't you, or cuneiform? Yeah, yeah there, there's a lot of work to be done. And to revise it and get it all right. And uh, I, I really can't see why they can't see this. Mm, uh, mm, they, mm. they need to sort of think differently. Mm. We're not trying to knock Because they haven't cracked these things, have no. they? They're not unintelligent people. Of course They're not, not lazy people. But they've been, shall we say, if you, if you join the army and for 12 weeks you won't know if you stand on your head or your yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you really are. And the, the, they break the same first, thing. Yes. They've, they've been educated into something, or the manner of doing things. And we're saying there's a better way. Mm. That's mm. all. And so let's start again. And there's an awful lot going to come out of this all over the place. There's all sorts of revisions of history going to be happening, aren't there? I would think it would create, you can always do the whole thing again, an enormous amount of work for them. They're, yeah. they're looking the wrong way. They're looking the wrong way. So this, is not, this, is, this is great for them. It's not ending the story, is it? We've we had people writing us from all the History 2.0, isn't they, it? They're telling us, you know, we've got some inscriptions here, and that's the other, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, was, we're two guys and with no finances. There's not a lot we can do, you know. And we've been fighting a lone battle, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So sitting, sitting tight and doing but it. But definitely more collaborators, there's no doubts about that. Well, I'm 86, for God's sake. My colleague's younger, but he's fed up. To the, he's had a lifetime, and we're both fed up with it, you know. Mm. Well, he's got his St. Patrick book coming out soon, hasn't he? So. He's done it, didn't he? I, I, I I've kept away from that. <laughs> he wanted to do one his, on his own. So he's done St. Patrick on his yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, I have a little sneaky preview. That's very bloody, interesting. Bloody film. Yeah, yes. It's very good. Yes. I, I've kept away. I'm I'll it. try and have a word I of mean, him. I've been having a little sneaky look at it. It's, he's very good. So he said, I'm going to do my own book. And he said, everybody thinks I don't do anything. And I said, well, that's not true, Tom. He said, but I, you know it and I know it, but they don't know it. Yes, <laughs> so yes, I said, yes. Oh, I said, I'm going to do a book on St. Patrick. I said, oh, go ahead. Do St. Patrick, you know. And he's done a very good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, no, I've had the honour of uh, spending a lot of time with you and seeing yeah. how you work with Barham and everything, isn't it? Anthony, yeah. sorry. Or... Yeah, it's just a two way yeah. street, I mean. You know, and he used to scour the bookshops finding his old books and that. Mm-hmm. It's been hours and he'd go to Hailmoy and he'd go down to Swansea and over to Bristol. And he'd... Well, that's the thing with collaboration that we're trying to do um, online as well without. You know, with yeah. groups and Facebook well, groups and that. Is you the got, so you've got USA history. Oh, hang on a second. Sorry, it's just like, this found my favourite favorite book of yours here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We'll just end on that. We'll have another video. I love that. Look at that. That's great. Do you like that book, do you? <laughs> <laughs> he said it. You know, Alan said the Ross was right. There we go. Yeah. Every time I have an argument, there, I'll just put this little clip on. Alan says Ross was right. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Uh.